Hello there, Seraphim17 once again. This is a update video that is a little, you know, long in the tooth because it's been ruminating for a while, but I didn't make it. And alas, here I am, you know, shooting from the lip. I'm going to start off immediately, unlike normally, going into Patreon thanks because I haven't made an update video since November and we're in February, the end of February. So I really need to thank some of these people that have come on to support the channel and have decided to you know, send some support my way and they are literally the backbone to the videos that all of you guys get to enjoy and it's an awesome thing so I need to give back and I need to represent. So what I'm going to do here folks, because the UI on Patreon is it's not the best, I'm going to be going over to my emails and I'm going to be going through the received emails to see where people have pledged and I'm just going to thank some people by name. Don't worry folks, I will not be using any of the information that it gives me because of course I can steal your identity and all that great stuff, but <clears throat> I'm not a bad person so I, I don't do that shit. So the first one we have here is uh, very apt. John has pledged to the channel. Uh, I'm not going to share surnames, just going to say first names. Thank you kindly John, means a lot brother. And then after that we have Tobin. Tobin has pledged, thank you sir. Then we have Tony. Nice manly name there, Tony. Ah, my name's Tony. How are you doing? That guy's pledged, thank you, sir. Then we have Connor. Thank you very much, Connor. <laughs> Means a lot, dude. Then we have Matthew. Thank you, sir. Uh, then we have Dude Called Mike. Like it. Short to the point. Does exactly what it needs to do. Mike. Welcome, sir. And then above that we have Adam. So thank you, Adam. There's another one. And Andy. Thank you, sir. Then we have Archer, which, if that's the person I think it is, you'll spot him by his picture. You'll see the green Archer. He's a man who is rather fond of the bow and bow-related characters. So thank you, sir. Welcome to uh, supporting the Empire. Then we have Chris, a man after my own name. And I think that is all the new pledges since the last update. So... A massive thank you to all of those people. A massive thank you to the people who were already with me, already over on Patreon, you know, showing their support, showing how much the channel means to them. It's a strange world that we live in at this moment in time where people can present themselves on the internet via their voice, via certain medias, and they can get people that like it so much and that are so interested in, you know, the pursuit of it that they're willing to, to put the hard-earned money that they've got themselves towards helping you know benefact it and to me it's the most humbling and amazing situation ever I know there's a lot of negativity that comes with this kind of situation a lot of people accuse you of charity and begging and, and all that kind of you know gray area of uh, disliking the whole setup of people paying you for things but uh, I'm looking at it more of just it's just this awesome sign of we like what you do this much and I think that's amazing so I'd just like to big, big thank you to everybody over on my Patreon. And if you are interested in looking into that, there is a link on, on my profile where my header is. It says, help build the empire. You click that, it'll take you to that entire place and you can do whatever you want to do there. It's entirely up to you. There is no pressure. There is nothing forcing you. And I will never, ever hide any videos behind any kind of paywall or, or anything along those lines. My channel will continue to be free as long as I can make it free. This is just the people who want to go a step further, being able to have an avenue to do that. And it's amazing and I'm immensely grateful. Additionally to this, I have to make a, a slight addendum to Patreon and explain a few things. Uh, one of my uh, subscribers, a long time guy, uh, informed me that Patreon were making some questionable, shall we say, um, financial and law abiding uh, moves when it comes to their international users. So anybody who's outside of the Americas is going to be having maybe a little bit of issue when it comes to tax regulating in the next coming weeks slash months so there isn't a chance that this patreon thing will completely dry up and uh, i'll have to to leave it which it sucks because right now it's it's awesome to have the support and it, it opens up so many you know doors and avenues for me to do extra things that are happening behind the scenes but at the same time it's one of those things where i'm not here to take this for granted i'm not here to be like oh i never have to do anything i'm just gonna have all these silly bastards pay my wage that's not what it's about and I don't want to get into any kind of tax trouble and I'm not entirely sure what the, this this information is completely. All I read was the little press release from a company that investigated it but to kind of wrap it up and to make it as simple as I can, 
Patreon have decided not to handle uh, their international tax and instead they want the patrons themselves to manage it via every pledge that they have and it pretty much made out that you would have to be getting very personal information, you know, national insurance numbers, uh, that I think is an ID of some kind in America that you get uh, when, you know, when you have to work and using that information to, to verify tax and things and to run it past your own, you know, your own tax organizations and this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time but you don't see it because it's administrative stuff that banks do themselves and, and you know, your, your company that you work for will do and things. But Patreon have, have washed their hands of that and they've kind of just kind of been you know, like, it's not our problem type deal. So all the international people uh, are in a bit of a bother because if you don't pay tax on, on things that you get, you know, unless you're within a certain variable of, of, of earnings, you can get done for tax evasion. You know, you can get done for fucking Wesley sniping it. And um, you don't really want to do that as much as prison sounds like free education to me. But Patreon could be going away and I'll keep you updated on exactly what that is. Uh, it doesn't diminish the value of my patrons or any of that kind of stuff because I'm sure that I'll look into some other avenues to, to keep on funding this engine of insanity that is my channel. But another footnote on top of this immense, you know, Patreon topic. Two people have subscribed to me a ridiculous amount. Actually, there's more than that, but there's one person who did it without a reward, which is even crazier to me because that dude's a legend. But... Uh, two people have, have pledged to the highest amount that I can give and it opens them up to the ability to ha have access to my unlisted videos. And my unlisted videos as it stands generally are between maybe one to two videos to upwards of 30 at uh, any given time. It fluctuates depending on, you know, variables, which I'll explain later when we get into the full channel update. But I've been currently having problems with Patreon logging in because it's got this weird system and I, I managed to get in the other day. And what it was doing is you know how on a website you can save your information so it saves your email address and it saves your password and all you have to do then is press login and then you get in and you don't have to fuck about remembering things or forgetting things or, or resetting things. Well, I have that saved for Patreon, but every time I clicked login it did nothing. So the other day I was fucking about deleting information, re-putting it in and stuff, and it was still doing nothing. And then uh, I ended up turning off the, the memory of it remembering my details. And then when I entered them in and I went to sign in, it let me in. But for some weird reason, the information it had saved, which was accurate and the login details, it just, there was no script to take it to the in entrance page. It just kept me out. And it kept me out for a few days. It was, it was absolutely annoying. But I don't have a system in place that lets people access my unlisted videos. So I'm having to jump through a few hoops, which makes it kind of awkward. And... It sucks because I love sharing these early videos to, to these these patrons because it's cool. It's not only are they doing me a favor and being like, you know, Chris, there's no fucking commentary on this. What you're playing it before anybody else gets to say that a million times, but they're also, you know, the scene behind the scenes of things and the the seeing things slightly earlier. So it, it has that air of like, you know, a more personal nature to it because it's only two two guys, obviously, or two girls. I don't know. No, I think the guys and. There's a, there's a coolness to it, but I wish I could handle it better. So I just want to apologize to those two people. There's been a few videos that I would like to share with them, but it's been really awkward and I've been locked out and stuff, and, and that service has, has not been up to the par that I would like it to be, but it's a working progress, and when I think, figure out a better way of doing it, maybe you know some kind of Facebook group where you can just have an exclusive membership to that and I can just dump everything in there or something. I'm gonna think I'm gonna figure something out that makes it run smoother because like I have what 60 Final Fantasy 10 videos uploaded at this moment in time. The playthrough's currently in about mid 30s. That's nearly half of what everybody's seen that they could be watching that they can't get access to because I can't do what I've pledged that I would do for them and it makes me feel bad but it's it's one of those just bullshitty technology moments which sometimes can't be avoided but that is the end of patreon talk folks and let's talk about the channel so i'm just gonna get rid of this we're pretty ghetto when we do these there's lots of noises happening lots of background interference so it is the 21st of february we're coming upon a month till bloodborne and bloodborne is is kind of the first project of the year but it will not be the first project hitting the channel and there's a few things I have to do before this is going to be a thing. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be buying a clampable um, microphone arm, which is going to hopefully enable the mic quality to be better, because instead of me leaning forward towards a mic that sat about my groin level and tilted up towards me, I'll be able to have it in my face, you know, 
I like some kind of professional fellatio artist and then boom we can you know get the pearly tones out there and I'm hoping it will reduce some of the noise that you can obviously hear on a handful of the projects that I try to mask as best as I can but my setup right now unfortunately there's not much I can do outside of noise reduction and the last time I did noise reduction it fucked with a lot of things because of the, the nature of the noise I assume but that is something I'm going to be picking up shortly. It's also hopefully going to help on the live recordings because I can hook it to my TV desk and I can have it bent across to where my bed is, to where I'm sat, and hopefully it'll make the quality of those you know, a little bit better because we're always in the business of pursuing better quality and I'm under no illusion that I could do with better quality and I want better quality. It's the endless strife. But that is one thing we're going to be moving towards. Of course, when Bloodborne comes out, I'm buying a PlayStation 4. I'm going to need a new capture device to record it because they're HDMI only and I do not have a HDMI to component cable. I tried to buy one from America, it took a week to, to arrive and then when I checked the order, it had been cancelled the day before it decided to come. And um, I was refunded and I just kind of didn't question it. I, I took it as God saying, don't do this Chris, buy a fucking new machine. And that's what I'm going to be doing and it's going to open a few doors having access to this. Not only is it going to be much more convenient than the cable fuckery that I have to deal with daily, but it's also going to enable me to capture the Xbox One that I currently have at my house courtesy of a friend. There are quite a few games I would like to have captured on Xbox One so far that I've played. Lords of the Fallen is a great one. Not only was I able to beat Lords of the Fallen with you know, all the different classes on New Game Plus, but I was able to do it in about two to three hours because I played through it a few times. I had some really interesting builds, I had some really, really powerful builds and builds I think that would help people who maybe weren't too good at those kind of games and just wanted to play that one or were just going for the achievements because it's a pretty fun game. It has problems, but I think I could make a really interesting guide. There's also a, a trick in that game where you can use the shield bash that the game has, which is the finest technique in that entire title, but you can kind of exploit the way it detects the shield bash by running kind of circle strafing enemies in sprint, bashing the uh, shield bash button, and it does continuous damage. So you can strip bosses in seconds that would normally take minutes to fight with individual laborious slow hits. So it's incredibly powerful. You'll see a lot of speedrunners using it, because as soon as I realised just how sick it was, I looked online to see if anybody else knew, thinking I could have a sexy video, and alas, there was none. Also somebody mentioned that you can record via the direct capture thing that the Xbox One has. Every single time I snap that piece of shit on that machine, it fails. It says something did not work, something fucked up, this machine's a bag of dicks, don't buy it. And uh, there you go. So that's why I haven't done any of those five minute clips, because it just doesn't fucking work. But Fun game, same with Rise. Rise is a fun game, but there's a section on Rise that I think is fucking diabolically stupid. It involves protecting a bunch of soldiers by throwing pillums at archers, and the throw mechanic's too slow, the damage variables are too high. It's, it's a terrifying section that me and Aiden were trying to do at my house for about half an hour, getting absolutely bummed, and then when he left, I did it first time without the enemy even attacking the, the team. Like it, it was so just stupid that it put me off the concept of making a guide for that game. Not that anybody's going to need it, because Rise is very easy. Like I was on an achievement walk through the other day on uh, xboxachievements.com or, or org or whatever it is, and there was people like, you're going to have to master the combat to beat Rise on Legendary. It's like, what? Master the fucking combat? You can master the combat in the tutorial because it's literally all there is to it. Like, come on, guys, master the combat. Who do you think you're kidding here? All you fucking have to do is bash and you'll win on that game. It's ridiculous. Like, I played the entire game without upgrading my life. And it was still easy. So, just because you show that, it's, it's a game that's only tricky when the combat fails. And it fails far more often than it should but channel updatory things. There's t like Sunset Overdrive. I want to do a live walkthrough for Sunset Overdrive because I think that game is really fun. And I think the key component to making Sunset Overdrive good is by playing it well. And I like to think that I can play it quite well. So hopefully I can make a, an interesting to watch kind of project because we all know watching somebody play a game like that who's not so good at it can be uh, almost like pulling teeth. But I'm hoping that the fact that I've been able to play quite a lot of it will enable me to make it quite interesting. I'm under no illusion there'll be some people like, Oh, you fucking suck! I'm so much better! I have the e-penis the size of Zeus's beard! Like, yeah, that's fantastic, dude. There's millions of you on the internet now. Fuck off. But, it should be fun anyway. 
but that is, give or take, about 120 quid dropped on a capture device, something around those numbers, which is a lot of money, but it's not too bad at this moment, and it's going to pay itself back, so I'm happy to do that, and it's going to enable me to capture the next gen stuff, which is awesome. Currently on the channel, we have a lot happening. Some of it's getting a nice reception, and some of it's, you know, getting a, a lukewarm reception. It's all kind of doing an average of, give or take, 300 to 500 views, which, you know, it sounds fucking awful, doesn't it? It sounds appalling, unless you're a small channel. Small channels, you know, are small, and thus will appreciate things that bigger channels won't. To me, three to 500 views on a video that I know is not, you know, some kind of hot shit, everybody wants to watch it, get your tits out, booby face cam nonsense, is, is pretty good right now. When you consider I average anywhere between 300 to 2,000 views, that's that's kind of my ballpark area. It's not too bad, considering the games are old, even though they are being remade, and they're not games that everybody likes, you know, they're not that universal water cooler games, the games that you either played from your childhood, or you had no interest in, or, you know, you never went near. But, they're also very long, and that is another issue, because the longer something runs, the more burnt out you get. Look at Police Academy. How good was Police Academy 1? Then look at the last one. There was a definite drop in quality, and it's because it lasted too long and it overstayed its welcome. And you can't do that, even though when it comes to a playthrough, it's kind of the nature of the beast. And every single series of videos you will make will always have diminished returns. It's how it works. You have to kind of accept it. It can be saddening, but there's not much you can do. Even, you know, the kings of YouTube, the, the royalty like PewDiePie and, and all those people, even they have, you know, the suffering of diminished returns, which is why a lot of their schemes that they do and their series aren't series. You know, they do one-off videos, they do short snippet montage things, because they realise that the average retention is very short, and it's the best way to, to kind of but let's look into what a couple of those projects are, and I'll tell you where they currently are as of the production side. Final Fantasy X is recorded. It is about a hundred parts. It has the main game, it has Blitzball, it has accruing the ultimate weapons for certain characters, it has the formation of how to get strong, it has the Dark Aeons, and then it has a successful penance kill. It has pretty much the best parts of the game. 100 parts, it's going to be a long one, it's going to be running that up until mid-year, and it'll be interspersed with other projects as much as I can. Then we have Kingdom Hearts 2, which has been slowed down a little bit reception-wise, so you'll notice I haven't aired it too much recently, I've given it a little space, it, it, don't get me wrong folks, it's going to come back, it'll probably be maybe tomorrow or the day after. That is currently sitting about at about 70 parts. Because of the bosses in that game and how I've separated them, it's made the guide look longer than it actually is. It's still a pretty damn long game. There's only a couple more of those to commentate, and because they are shorter videos, they're generally easier to do on your throat. So they will be coming interspersed with other projects. The Wonderful 101. This is one you haven't seen for a while. So recently Nintendo essentially said, We are creatively devoid and greedy, and we're going to offer what is essentially the rope to hang yourself when it comes to creating Nintendo based content. If you want to make specific Nintendo based content you can do so if you become our partner, but we're going to take a percentage of it, an unrealistic percentage of it that we did fuck all to earn. And this is a very controversial argument because on one side of the fence you have the people who think anyone who makes money from doing video walkthroughs or, or capturing a specific game are breaching a copyright of the game because they're using its image to, to, for financial gain when they didn't create what that image is of. And I understand this argument. I don't think it's valid, but I understand it completely. We have not made these fantastic games that we are covering. However, we are changing them into transformative material. I mean, of course, not everybody is. Some people are being a little bit more nefarious and just taking it and sticking it and doing as little work as possible and getting maximum reward. And in those rare cases, I do think that, you know, something needs to be done. But at the same time, it, you know, it begs that question, doesn't it? What is enough to make it your own? Is it putting a tash on the Mona Lisa? You know, is it you used Unreal Engine and thus, because you designed your game using our engine, we need 30% of your game's maximum gross. Like, it's it's this weird, weird place of, of just that internet and gaming coming together and not performing so well. 
it's it's bizarre that they want to take so much it really is like language was invented at one point but it's all collectively used and we don't ask for money from the people writing books you know I know it's a pretty ridiculous example but to me it seems kind of bizarre but that's the way Nintendo wants to go. Instead of looking at this as free advertisement, as a way to, to get their game out there, they're looking at this as an opportunity to make money. And uh, one side I would understand is if they didn't want people like me saying their game is a big old bag of dicks and, you know, dropping fucking rape jokes or holocaust jokes or some kind of inappropriate uh, humour or, you know, something they don't want associated with their game or the image of their game. That I completely understand. But asking for money? That I don't. Like, do you not have enough money, Nintendo? Did you not milk enough fucking housewives with your wank-ass peripheries, like, or peripherals, sorry? Like, it just, I, I find it baffling, but this is not, you know, Sarah from Rants for 20 minutes, even though I easily fucking could. This is just Nintendo are being kind of weird. So, the Wonderful 101 isn't a part of that scheme. So, I'll be uploading that just fine. The problem with that is, I love that game, and it's getting like 100 views, because nobody else does. Nobody's heard of it, nobody understands what's happening. There's like a, a niche of people that love it, but it's it's really tough to see something I wish could get, you know, more views than Dark Souls, get less views than, than, than like, ads. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre, they get less views than I do on fucking Twitch, it's, it's unbelievable. But it's all recorded, folks. It's all coming, and I'm going to be uh, introducing it back into the lineup when I can. Then we have Birth by Sleep both Terrors and, Aqu and Aquas campaigns, they're all there, it's all recorded, I'm just going to be eking it out every so often so that you don't get too sick of Kingdom Hearts, because there's been a lot of it for the last few months. Then there's the credit feeding, where we're doing some ranked matches on Street Fighter 4, it's going to be moving to other fighting games, it's going to be moving to other arcade games, it's going to hopefully be, you know, embellishing upon what it's already done. It's not doing massive numbers. But it's doing enough that people are showing that they like it, they're interested in having fun, and that's pretty much enough for me. And then we have the, the Dark Souls appreciation run that I'm doing in, in Run Up for Bloodborne, which people are having fun with. And of course the Demon's Souls one that's going to follow it, which is going to be another fun one. And those two are, are performing really well, because it's just the, the nature of people like to watch that. And then we have Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, and Chaos Theory. Pandora Tomorrow is already up on YouTube, all of it. Even though you haven't seen it, it's all there. It's coming very shortly. Chaos Theory is all captured, but I've only edited the first few levels. I'm going to be commentating them very shortly, and I'm going to be putting them up before Pandora finishes, so there's like a double cast of, of the Splinter Cell goodness. And then on top of that, there isn't too much else, except for a couple of novelty balls deeps and things that I'm working on, and some Street Fighter stuff that you'll see later. So you might wonder what the next projects are going to be, that's generally the topic that a lot of people come to these videos for. And the first one you're going to be seeing is on the 10th of March, which is going to be the Devil May Cry Definitive Edition on Xbox One. If I have a capture card at that point for the Xbox One, I will capture that game. I'm not high hopes for it, it's going to look pretty, it's going to run at 60 frames per second, but for everything else it's going to be the same game that I've already covered, but we're going to probably do it live, that might add some spice to it so that there'll be that on the channel, because there's no games, guys. At all. It's very dead. And then after that, like a week later, is going to be the Final Fantasy Type-0, which I'm hoping to cover as well. I'm really excited for that game. I've never played it before. I've never even heard of it until they, they did this remake of it, this high-definition high version. But I think it looks really interesting, and I think it could be really fun. The problem with it is it comes out on the 17th, and just over a week later, Bloodborne comes out, and when Bloodborne comes out, it's going to clear everything. Unless I come back angrily in the first 24 hours of that game's release with a video saying Bloodborne can suck a fucking dick, I see myself decimating it as far as content goes and, you know, appreciating it for a rather long time. However, I'm going to temper my expectations because you never know, I might absolutely hate it, I might think it's crap. I don't think I will but there's always the chance and then it'll just be back to business as normal and then the next thing we'll be looking forward to is probably Witcher 3 something along those lines but that is pretty much it folks that is where the channel is at this moment that is where it's intending to go there's always you know time for different things between there there's always you know room for improvements and for surprises and for just differing things 
I can't promise anything except that I'm going to try my best to, to make entertaining and fun content even if that means getting really angry which some people don't think is you know entertaining or fun but then there's another people that really like that so I'm going to try and toe the line in all the directions I can uh, and bring the highest quality that I'm physically capable of until you know I get the next upgrade in quality so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for supporting and you take care now